out the door or to find that. So, Psalm 100. Begin reading there with verse number one. Shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever. And his faithfulness continues to every generation. May God add a blessing to the reading of his holy and perfect word. This Thursday, we will gather together for uh, Thanksgiving. We are so blessed. It is so right and fitting that we do so. Um, it's a holiday set aside just to give thanks to God. This nation has a long history of that, going back and, and praising God and thanking Him for these things. Um, sometimes we forget, though, that it goes all the way back to, in many schools, right, we learned about the pilgrims. And, um, but they were real people that had real problems. Um, they left everything they knew because they didn't feel they could worship God freely. And so they made this radical decision to come halfway around the world. They left all they knew. They braved the very cold North Atlantic Ocean for 66 days um, to come here to the New World. Now, I've been on the uh, replica of the Mayflower. I don't know if many of you have or not, but it is a very small ship. I see Tim nodding that he has been there. And to think that 102 people uh, were on that ship uh, for two days, let alone 66, is almost unfathomable to think of the conditions of which they would have to endure. And yet they did so so that they could come here and have freedom to worship God. Now, when the pilgrims arrived, uh, the things were much harder than they originally had hoped. They arrived a little later because of some currents and things than they had hoped. The weather was colder, uh, the land a little less hospitable than they had desired, and there was so much sickness as well. And so, with very little food, they faced a very hard winter. In fact, that winter in 1620, uh, 46 of the 102 pilgrims uh, passed away due to starvation or cold or sickness. And so certainly there were many who were wondering if they had made a grave error uh, in coming. And certainly there were also many who wondered where was God who they thought was telling them to come here. And so there were some who felt a degree of hopelessness. Maybe some of you can identify with that uh, this Thanksgiving season. Whether it's for some trauma that's happened in your life something that's less than pleasant, maybe the loss of a loved one, and you wonder, where is God in helping you with that? You see, though, when we do have God, we always have hope. Because we see in the story of the pilgrims a story of, of hope, because God granted to them a miracle. And that miracle occurred in the person of Squanto. Squanto is a person whose importance in history, I think, has not been given the credit that is due to him. He lived a very difficult and hard life, but he made a decision to help when it would have been much easier for him not to do so. He was a Native American born in about 1585 in what is now uh, Plymouth, Massachusetts. And while some Europeans were exploring the area, uh, they captured uh, Squanto in 1605, and they took him to England. Taken away from everything he knew, from all the people that he had loved, and everything that he knew as a way of life, it would be nine years until which time he would be able to return again to the place where he was born. He was told that he could come along on an exposition and serve as a, a guide and a translator. And when he arrived, uh, he did just as he was told, but some of the people along with him did not keep their word. It wasn't the captain, he kept his word, but some of the others uh, actually uh, kidnapped Squanto and some others, and they intended to take him to Spain and sell him into slavery. However, God is always at work. And when he arrived in Spain, um, some Christian monks decided to purchase everyone who was up for sale for slavery that day, and they took Squanto and many others, and they educated him in the Christian faith. 
It was a few years later in 1617 then that Squanto convinced them that he would like to return back to his homeland. And so he first went from Spain back to London um, so that he could work on building ships for about two years until he had raised some money and then he was able to go uh, on another voyage back to the New World. He was going to serve as an interpreter and guide to pay some of his way. And when he arrived after 14 years away, he found, sadly, that his entire tribe had passed away one year prior of vast sickness. And so now he finds himself here once again alone. 14 years he had been away. He had learned English and he had learned Spanish. He, he had learned much about the Bible. And why did all this happen to him? And yet he decided that he would stay uh, in the area where his previous village was and that he would live there. It was then in the winter of uh, 1620 uh, that, he healed, that he heard about the pilgrims and their colony. So the next March on the 22nd day of that month, he went into Plymouth Plantation and he made this proclamation, I am Squanto, to which the pilgrims were shocked. Here is a native person who is speaking rather fluent English. And not only that, that he is a Christian and that he has decided to aid them and help them in whatever way that he can. And so he went on to teach them about how to uh, grow crops that were far different than the ones that they had brought from Europe. In fact, pretty much all the European crops would not grow in this terrain. And so he taught them how to dig clams and oysters, where to fish and where to catch eels and other things that they were able to eat. He also helped them make peace with the other natives who lived in the area. And while there was much violence throughout New England and many other capacities over the years, they made a treaty that would last more than 50 years of serving peace in that area. And so through his hard work and his advice, they had a great abundance of harvest that year. And so it was decided that they should have a great feast uh, that fall to celebrate that. And so they invited some of the other natives from the area. About 90 of them came. They brought five uh, fully dressed deer to help bring the feast and they feasted. And that is often what we think of and depict when we think of that first Thanksgiving. Natives and settlers and all people coming together to thank God for what he had blessed them with. The pilgrims were not um, shy about their faith. They, they certainly didn't force the natives um, to accept their beliefs, but they did not shy away from them. Nor did Squanto, sharing with his friends. And so all the people joined together, though, in thanking the Creator who had made all things. Squanto and the pilgrims both considered this a miracle, right? Much like Joseph from the Bible, right? Joseph was taken from everything that he had known. His brother sold him into slavery, and yet later in life, uh, he would rise to be the second in all of Egypt. So that when his brothers had to come to ask for food, Joseph was able to forgive and to provide that food. So, too, in some ways, we could say that in a certain situation, Squanto taken away from his entire land. But yet, in that time away, he was able to learn English and Spanish and about Christianity and about Jesus. And then he was able to give back when it would have been easy to harbor some degree of hostility or hate for those who had taken so much from him. And yet he chose to give of his time to help. In fact, for the next 20 months, he would serve as their interpreter, guide, and advisor, teaching them how to trade with the natives, how to grow other local crops, um, and other things. It was the Lord's will, though, that Squanto would pass away after 20 months. He got a, a sickness, and he passed away at rather a young age. But here was a man who echoed the very nature of what it should mean to have Thanksgiving in her heart. Someone who, despite the unusual and somewhat cruel circumstances that befalled him, continued to show kindness to those who are around him, greeting uh, those who were not native to his land, sharing what he could and have so that others could prosper. It was 161 years later that we have the United States of America. So that in 1789, George Washington, our first president, issued a proclamation about Thanksgiving. And it, it reads 
by the President of the United States a proclamation, whereas it is the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God, to obey His will, to be grateful to His benefits, and to implore His protection and favor, whereas both houses of Congress have made a request to renounce to the people of the United States a day of thanksgiving and prayer, to be observed and to acknowledge with grateful hearts the favor of Almighty God. And so I do recommend and I do assign Thursday, the 26th day of November next, to be devoted to these people of these United States, to be in service of the great and glorious being who is the benefactor and the author of all good that ever was, that is, or will ever be. It is right and fitting that all nations, and particularly ours, will this week pause to celebrate a day of thankfulness, a day to thank God for how much goodness he has given to us. God often needs to give us a little reminder, though, about the reasons for that thankfulness. And today, uh, in our text, we looked at the 100th Psalm, which was written as a psalm to, to praise God with a thankful attitude, to remind us to be thankful and to maintain a sense of gratitude in whatever situation or circumstances we find ourselves in. You see, this psalm was written to the people of Israel, of course. Um, and God wanted them to have a reminder that when you settle down into your warm bed tonight, as Beatty so eloquently said, when you sit at your table and enjoy some nice warm food, remember me. Remember what I had given to you. And it doesn't take us very long. It didn't take the Israelites very long to need that reminder. And it doesn't take us either very long to know that we need a reminder from time to time as well to thank God for those things. The very first verse talks about that this uh, psalm was addressed to all the earth. And the very last verse um, of the passage that I read, I know it didn't all get on the screen, but you can look it up later, about all generations that this message is so deep and so wide that it applies to everyone. Far too often, we kind of think I should only be thankful for the things that I have, right? We start thinking, well, how's my investments? Are they, are they, how am I feeling about uh, my health? Do I think everything is going well? And if I determine that everything is more plus than negative, then I can be thankful. But the Bible says to be thankful no matter what is happening to us. You know, the things that we so often prize, they could drip away from us. Drift away, I wanted to say. I think not drip away. Um, they could burn up. Someone could take them or steal them. Um, and so really the most wonderful gift we can have is just a relationship with God. You see, that's what our first part of our verse is saying. It says there, shout to the Lord. Worship the Lord with gladness. See, everything in all creation should be thanking God for, for existing. Hasn't God been good to you? When you think about it, hasn't there been good things in your life? Shouldn't we praise God for those? Maybe God has not solved every single problem in the world yet, but there will be a time when we stand in His presence in which everything that is negative or against God will be passed away. And besides that, he is still God. He is still the one who is worthy of praise because he has given us the most important thing that can never pass away, which is the gift of relationship with him, the ability to know him for all time. He has given us life itself and the ability not just in this life, but in the life that is to come. This text then talks about our ability to worship with song. And as you know, we usually sing when we worship. We have several songs, at least four every week. And that song is a wonderful means of expressing love and gratitude uh, to God. And that doesn't mean that we all have to possess great musical skills. I know I don't. And maybe some of you aren't as blessed either. But you sing to God because it gives Him glory and it gives him honor because what he desires is it to come from our heart to appreciate him. That we have so much to be thankful for, to express that joy to him. Verse 3 commands us, he made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. He 
made us. You are not an accident. Your facial structure, your body, your personality, God chose them. He made you as you are. He formed you and created you. And he made you as he wanted you to be. And yet, he is also still making you. He is still working and transforming us that we would become even more of who he wants us to be. That he is working in our lives to help us to change, to be molded to his uh, ideal of ourselves if we allow him. He says then that he added that we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. He's the shepherd. He's the one leading us. Now, sometimes we would all probably prefer to be the shepherd, the one leading. Or sometimes we think, I want to serve God, but we think, well, I'd like to serve him in an advisory capacity. God, I have a couple notes for you. Some things you might want to think about changing. No, no. God is God. He knows all things. We just have to discover and serve him. We are the sheep. He is always watching out for us, leading us and guiding us because he is kind and good. And that is his very nature. Verse 4 adds that enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. Give thanks and praise his name for God is good. His love continues forever. See, when we enter into worship, uh, whether that's here on a Sunday morning or just in a time of devotion that you have with, with God, that we should first and foremost thank God. Thank Him for what He has done, what He is yet doing in this moment, and what He will do in the future. Because He is worthy of that. Because God has been faithful to us. He's been faithful to the Israelites. He was faithful to the pilgrims. He was faithful to Squanto. And he will always continue to be faithful. He's with us wherever we go. When we're driving, when we're working, when we're with our children, every single moment of our lives. And so it is right and fitting that we set aside time to praise him. And it is right and fitting that we set aside a day to praise him. To reflect on how good God has been to us. For he is good, isn't he? So I pray that maybe even this week, you look again back at the 100th Psalm. It's, it's very short, just a few verses there, five, I think. And just read over it again and allow those words to take a precedence in your mind. Allow it to help you shape how you're viewing your day. That there are things happening today of which you can be thankful for. Because this Thursday, everything from a human perspective might not be perfect. People might show up late. Other people might start arguments. Maybe you'll start an argument. The turkey might be overcooked. The potatoes might be undercooked. I don't know. There's not going to be in an ideal sense from a human perspective. But in those moments of human imperfection, look to God who is the author and provider of life, to think about all the good that he has done and continues to do. Think back on the story of Squanto, a man whose role in the first Thanksgiving, in my opinion, cannot be overstated. A man who was taken from everything that he ever knew, surely experiencing hardship along the way, and yet still showed love compassion and gave what he could to those who were new to this land. Wonderful attributes for us to echo as well, to be kind and welcoming to all that we encounter. May that be said of all of us as we go forth. Let us pray. Father God, you are so good. You are so kind. You have went out of your way to share your goodness with us. And may we be so overfilled with your goodness that we have a deep passion and desire to share it with those who are around us. Father, even when things are less than ideal, help us to be thankful when we don't have everything. For maybe if we did, we would have nothing to look forward to. Help us to be thankful when we don't know something. For it gives us an opportunity to yet still learn. Help us to be thankful that when a difficult time comes, perhaps we will grow. 
Help us to be thankful for limitations because they give us opportunity to improve ourselves and allow you to work. Father God, may our hearts overflow with thanksgiving. That just as our text tells us, though no matter the situation, no matter the issues, no matter what the world is throwing us at us in this moment, um, that you are the source of all that is good and all that is right. And may we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.